I had Sparky Peter in Liverpool in the International Science Centre, which doubles as my mum's garage. And today I'm going to take you through insulation resistance testing. Now, the scenario here, it's, um, well, it's not, even though it's a domestic type consumer unit, th this isn't a domestic installation, is it? Because not many people have metal clad sockets and trunking and conduit in the houses. So the scenario would be if it was uh, a commercial installation, uh, a shop or something like that, and the, uh, an initial verification, which is the kind of inspection and testing you do uh, on newly completed work. Um, first thing to emphasize is it's a dead test. And what I've been able to do is I've been able to safely isolate, it, the, safely isolate the supply to this board. So because it's fed from this adi additional uh, board over here, uh, I've been able to carry out the safe isolation procedure on that single phase circuit and I've been able to isolate the supply to the consumer unit. I keep on calling it a board. Let's call it a consumer unit. Um, the next thing to say is to talk about the, the, the test equipment. Uh, it's a multifunction meter. We're going to use the insulation resistance setting. And the things to be aware of is that it conforms to a British standard. It's within calibration. It has GS38 approved leads. Now I need to say something about that in another clip but um, just for now we'll say that if we're testing above 50 volts AC or 120 volts DC we need to be aware about or be think about what kind of leads that we're using in that situation. The other thing to say is obviously it's free from damage, um, the leads are in good condition, the battery is in good condition. Um, talking about the leads I've um, checked the leads beforehand on the uh, the continuity setting now that will be covered um in another clip when i talk about continuity protective conductors but i've checked the leads on the continuity setting um, and i've also checked it on insulation resistance by connecting the leads together pressing the button there's an operation there's a button above here when we do this test um the test voltage is only applied when we press that button uh, other tests might be uh, activated straight away, but because this is putting out a, a test voltage, uh, it, it only comes uh, on when we press the, the button above. Um, the other thing to say is about the, the setup uh, of the installation before the test. Now, back in the olden days, sounding old there, 1982, Old Swan Tech, um, they just said lamps out, switches on, because we didn't have a lot of electronic equipment to consider back in those days uh, but now we've got to be a bit more sophisticated and we've got to say lamps loads and vulnerable equipment either removed or you know dealt with in some way so what it means for here is that we've got these rcds so that's something we need to consider and what i'm going to do there is i'm going to test the consumer unit in two halves um on the load side of each rcd so i'm not testing across the rcd itself I mean, in truth, some people will laugh at that and say, well, you know, you could just go ahead and do a global test. But I'm going to observe what it says in Guidance Note 3 and GN3. The other thing that I've done is I've got um, the lamps out, as you can see. I've got this switch on for this uh, one-way circuit, which is that fluorescent above. And I'm going to have to think about testing around every switch combination or the alternative switch combination for this two-way uh, lighting system and do that as a separate test. Also, you can see what I've done up here with the fluorescent light is I've taken the line of neutral out and I put that in a connector block. I've left the CPC, the earth, connected. Uh, now, somebody previously mentioned risk assessment. You know, uh, when we're carrying out activities such as this, we're, we're thinking about uh, risks all the time. Now, if I thought anybody was going to be hurt, including myself, by what I've done there, I'd have to take some kind of action. If that fluorescent light fitting was in a remote location, I might consider putting the, the covers on. But because it's in front of me and under my control, I'm happy with that at the moment. So there we go. So that's that's the, the, the setup. So what I can do is I can roll on with the, the testing. It's uh, 500 volts DC on the meter. And first of all, let's think about the left-hand side of the consumer unit. So I'm on the earth at the top. I'm gonna to go to my line connection. I'm going to press the button. I'm getting a value of greater than 299 mega ohms. If I go to the neutral, so neutral to earth, 
press the button. I'm getting greater than 299 mega ohms. Now if I just reconfigure these leads, would I be doing this if you weren't watching? Of course I would. And I'm going to go onto the line of neutral and I'm going to press the button again. And what I'm getting there is greater than 299. Now I could roll on and complete that on the other side, but it would be just the same uh, procedure. Um, and what I'd record on the documentation is greater than 299, you know, where relevant for, for each of those tests. Now, if we talk about the results, we can go to um, the, the regs and um, the relevant information in the regs or the table concern there, table 64 and circuit nominal voltage up to and including 500 volts with the exception of the above systems the test voltage is 500 volts and we're looking for one mega ohm that's our minimum it's a funny one that one i've often wondered why they've got one mega ohm in the um the on-site guide it tells us two mega ohms which used to be in the old gn3 now in the new gn3 it tells us 20 mega ohms it says a low insulation resistance Low an insulation resistance value as low as one mega ohm will comply with the requirements of the regulations. A new installation should not ye yield a test result this low, and in new installations, a value below 20 mega ohms should be investigated. Back to the, the board. The other thing I didn't say is that, um, that, that for the two way switching, I'll repeat those same tests again with, uh, with the switch just flipped over just to include the uh, the other uh, the strapper in that part of the circuit. So there we go. That's our insulation resistance testing. Also, just, just to add, if we do have uh, lamps, loads and you know vulnerable equipment that we can't uh, disconnect, then what the regs and GN3 allow for is to, um, well, if we've got surge protection, for example, we can drop to 250 volts. Um, we can also, now it's it's funny this one because it says it in, um, it used to say in Guidance Note 3, but I can't find it or I couldn't find it today, that you can operate a local switch and just miss out that bit of the of the circuit. It still says it in the on-site guide, so it's an interesting one, that one. The other thing that it says um, in all the guidance material is that uh, if we want to, what we can do is, uh, if we've got equipment that we can't disconnect, we can connect together um line and neutral now most electricians will have a little set of, oh i haven't got it with me but most electricians will have a little lead with, with uh, a crocodile clip on either end to make that connection so you connect together the line and the neutral buzz bars and then do a test between that one connection and earth and the way you'd have to record that on the documentation i mean in initial verification we uh, we don't expect to have any limitations it's either there and it's good and it gets a tick or it's not applicable, so in or a tick or a result. Uh, so in this case, we'd have to record um, for that particular bit. It's just simply not applicable. So that value between live conductors would simply get recorded as not applicable. Anyway, we're getting into sort of quite quite deep and quite complicated. Hopefully, you've got the the main part of uh, of the message. Um, as always, constructive criticism welcome, um, because nobody knows everything, and as always more to say.